Hello and welcome back. I'm still not sure what to call this thing. I'm calling it Making a Game from Scratch on a Mac. Uh, I'm your host, Ted Benningson, and today uh, we are on day five. So if you want to follow along with the source code, um, you can certainly do that on GitHub. Um, we're building a game from scratch on the Mac, and we are we've gotten to a point where we've got a window up. So if I, if we go to um, go to go and launch this little application here, um, we've got you can kind of click on it and uh, where is this video tutorial right? So I got this thing and it's actually a little self-contained app uh, called New Solutions. You double click on it, we just have a big red window. Now that's cool you know we've got a self self-contained application it's doing its own drawing little red window that's that doesn't get us that far though because there's you know obviously we want to like turn this into a game right you know we want to have it so that we're drawing um, a game inside of this window and that uh, and so that the um, what it's drawing the contents the contents of what it's rendering is actually cross-platform which means that we can take the same game, source code, and we can um, you know, cross-compile it for, say, Windows or for uh, WebAssembly or, or uh, another platform. So that's, a, that's, that's the goal for something like this. Um, but we can't really get anywhere um, until we can start sort of like drawing stuff on the screen. So uh, this is the point where my series really diverges from, say, Handmade Hero in the sense that what I want to do is get you started um, right away with rendering on metal. So we're actually going to go, like, we're going to dive right into that. And then after we're done uh, getting some of the basic stuff in metal uh, figured out and set up, after that point, then we're going to pivot over towards more of the cross-platform uh, game architecture kind of stuff. So the, the thinking is, you know, once we've gotten, and actually what I want to do is kind of also show you this thought process of how to go from solving one problem sort of in sequential order, like I need to get a, like I need to get a white rectangle onto the screen, or maybe even just a really simple problem like I want to get a white triangle onto the screen. So we start there and then, you know, we can build from that foundation into a totally cross-platform game and game engine, all that stuff. So that's actually what the goal is. Which means that today we're gonna to be doing a lot of, um, I don't know, a good, a good way of putting it is sort of like boilerplate kind of stuff. Um, I would call it border boilerplate metal setup. So, a lot of this is using um, Apple's SDKs, and much of it uh, has to do with um, Metal Kit and this idea of um, an MTK view or a Metal Kit view. That's actually what we're going to do. That's actually what we're going to use. Um, one kind of good way of looking at, um, at object oriented frameworks on the Mac is and also on UI kit, various different kits. Like I said, we're using just a little bit of the object-oriented stuff. We're not going to use that much of it. But basically, you have this idea of, um, I'll just put this in, in my scratch base here. Oh, and I'll also bump up the size of the text. You have this idea of um, views, right? Or, you know, view hierarchy. So you also you also have this idea of windows, and then um, there isn't really such a thing as a window hierarchy. On on Mac OS, you notice that we've got this thing called an NS window. Okay, and an NS window uh, is basically any any window that you see that's on on Mac OS is some kind of an NS window. Where does the NS come from? Well, it comes from Next Step which is um, most of the modern uh, APIs with Objective-C on the Mac come from this company that Steve Jobs founded basically after he was. The story, you probably already know the story, but 
Uh, Steve Jobs was, you know, founded Apple for a time, then uh, thought that they needed some new management, so they, so they brought in um, this CEO of like Pepsi-Cola at the time, Scully, I think. Scully and Steve didn't get along very well, you know, and so eventually Steve got ousted from his own company, and then the company that he went and started afterwards is called Next Step. And in, in, at Next Step, a lot of the um, infrastructure that's currently used in Apple's modern operating systems was developed. So that's where you get things like all the NS prefixes. NS window is, um, it, it comes from Next Step. So on Mac OS, um, NS windows are, represent these windows. And an, an NS window can have, um, displaying its content is an NS view, right? So you've probably seen a lot of this. If you go and you, and you read and you look at a lot of common um, tutorials on uh, how to do iOS programming or how to do Mac OS programming, there's a lot of talk about views and model view controller and um, uh, these kinds of like design patterns. And although I myself don't really find design patterns all that useful. Apparently there's research that says that um, people who learn the design patterns um, actually end up becoming better programmers than people that don't. So it's kind of like good training good training wheels uh, to learn the more advanced concepts of programming. So something like views, you can think of it as um, what, it, what it is, it's just like a way of, of talking about um, uh, things that are going to get drawn, right? It's it's a way of, of conceptualizing stuff that stuff that needs to get drawn. So basically, a view is just like stuff that needs to get drawn, right? And so when you have something like a view hierarchy, what is that? Well, you can talk about stuff that needs to get drawn in, in a lot of different ways, right? So we can talk about that in a you know, in a purely two-dimensional sense, like there's um, a rectangle, right? And inside of that rectangle, a bunch of other things need to get drawn, right? So we've probably got um, some text a lot of times that needs to get drawn. You've got buttons that need to get drawn. I'm just talking about standard application stuff that you would need to, to get drawn. But a lot, of, a lot of the way that this um, operating system is designed is also like views can contain other views, right? And that's, that is just purely like an abstract way of talking about it. So it, what I mean by that is, um, it, in terms of what actually happens, that's not really what happens. What this is, it's just a human-friendly way of talking about what's actually happening here. So. To say a view can contain other views, well, what does that mean? It's like our kind of abstract way of talking about this is I got a bit, I got a rectangle with some stuff I'm going to draw, and then inside of that rectangle I can have like a little sub rectangle that also has some stuff that it needs to draw, and inside of that rectangle I can also have some other stuff that needs to get drawn. That's like one way of conceptualizing how you might draw a screen. That is, we could say, you know. It's hierarchical. What does that mean, right? So that means that there can be like a root view, right? And then there can be um, like a child view sort of down here, right? And, you know, and then, you know, a child view might have um, one child uh, uh, off here and then another child, you know, off here, right? Something like that, right? And so on. That's, that's one way of conceptualizing um, how you might draw stuff that's on the screen, right? We've got this one root thing, and then what we're going to do is we're going to like um, go through its various siblings, kind of like a tree, sort of a tree sort of a structure, and we're just going to draw the contents of all of those. Um, that's one way of looking at it. And that's sort of how the kits do it. So um, that, I want to say, though, is, is very different from how you might, you know, that, that one way of conceptualizing it is not the only way to conceptualize it. Um, you can also conceptualize it as, you know, maybe there just isn't even such a thing as a view, 
right? What is a view really? Um, it, it's just ultimately what this comes down to is it's just a list of instructions for the GPU, right? So ultimately, there, there. Remember, in reality, there really isn't anything like a view. A view does not actually exist. That's just a human conceit. What actually does exist is um, this hardware component called a GPU, right? Graphics processing unit, and there exists memory on the system that's allocated for specific purposes. Um, so, so there's two types of uh, memory on a GPU. So there's, you know, a lot, a lot of what you what you end up working with. Two types of space, you could say, GPU. Um, and I'm probably wrong about this, so you can correct me. So there's vertex buffers, usually, and then there's um, texture memory, right? So. Generally speaking, uh, the way that you take this, you, you break down what um, is ultimately uh, is inside of a view is a, a big space in memory that represents all of the vertices in that view. So all of the, um, a, a vertex is just in math, that's, that's like if you have a triangle, each, each point on the end of, of the triangle is a vertex. And so, if you have like a square, each point on the uh, on the end of each on the square is is a vertex. So a square is defined as a well, a rectangle really is is not not necessarily a rectangle, I guess, because you also have um, well, there's <laughs> a quadrilateral is defined as a as a shape that has four vertices, right? A triangle is is uh, defined as a shape that has three vertices. And you know, a parallelogram is a shape that has uh, four vertices, but like two of them are the same distance, same uh, same width, etc. So you know, all of geometry kind of comes out of uh, vertices. This idea of points that are connected with lines, and then the space that is defined in between those points, right? And ultimately, this is what we there 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 actually is no such thing as as views. What views get turned into, eventually, somewhere down the pipeline, they get turned into a vertex buffer, a buffer of some space and memory that represents the actual points in between each thing, uh, the, the points that get drawn. So if you take a square, for example, that what is that? Well, that's actually just two triangles that are put together, right? And then you fill in the inside of it. So if we want to draw a, a, a box that's like a, a square of color, then all that we're really doing is we're just saying um, fill in this triangle here and then fill in the other triangle here with that color, put the two together, and you've got a, a square of color. So something like you know what the application already does right now, uh, where, it, where we've got like a, a window and we've got a... Um, We've got a got a window, and we've got it's just this red thing. So, like from from here to here, that's a triangle, right? That's a triangle that's that is getting drawn, and from here to here, that's another triangle, and it just gets filled in with the with the color red. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much of the details of how all of this works, but the point that I'm that I'm getting at is when you work with the object-oriented frameworks. Um, you're kind of working at this pretend higher level. You're sort of working at this abstraction level of talking about things as views, right? And that that and that that has a very specific um, uh, conceptualization of of how those of how those views are laid out. There's this idea of a view hierarchy, but at the very end of end of um, the day, when the system uh, Somewhere in that, somewhere in those libraries, something has to take this idea of a view, and it needs to translate it into something that can be loaded onto the GPU, and that into GPU instructions. And so, what that ultimately ends up being is a big chunk of memory, space, and memory that represents the vertices that are going to get drawn, the geometry, 
And then uh, there's, there's other uh, parts of memory. So if you want to say, um, take a picture and draw, like load a, load a PNG file and draw the contents of that file, well, basically what you're doing is you're drawing two triangles just like this, but instead of filling it with a solid color, you're going to fill it with um, the texture memory that you had already loaded. And so that's basically how, you know, that, that is actually what goes on. That's what those, what the kits end up doing eventually. And when, when, you, um, when you tell them to create a view that's got a view inside of a view. And this is kind of a level of discussion that you're not usually going to run into in, in a lot of um, uh, kind of common tutorials on how to program on the Mac or how to do iOS programming. But ultimately, at the, at the very end of the day, um, Metal is what draws um, the contents of, of the applications that you use every day. All of these uh, frameworks are kind of built on top of Metal. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, something's got a something has to traverse through this view hierarchy, go from the root view to the child view, and it's got to take all this information that's in these views, and then it's got to turn it into a vertex buffer, and then it's got to execute some commands on the GPU that will then draw those, uh, draw that geometry for you. So that's just kind of to give you some idea of what the um, similarities and differences are here. Uh, when we talk about windows and views, and we talk about a metal kit view, or we talk about an NS view, that is at a very different level of abstraction than uh, talking about uh, what really, really goes on uh, on the on the hardware. Now, you know, I say really in quotes because you know we can get like way into it. We can go, like start going into like you know, the physics and the hardware and the like electrical engineering. And um, as a software person, though, you don't ever touch that. And so you don't ever have a responsibility for that. It's cool to know, but uh, there, there actually there is sort of a level of understanding that's like so low that, you know, <laughs> for you to have much of an effect, you're going to have to be like engineering your own um, electrical components. So uh, we're not doing that. But I want to give you this understanding. When I talk about a view, I'm really just talking about sort of um, our forced interaction with these software development kits. We have to use these software development kits a little bit, like just a, a, just a little bit, in order to be, kind of be able to do our own thing. Ultimately, though, if it was up to me on like pretty much any platform, I wouldn't have any of this um, view stuff. And, and a lot of that is because you can't really be cross-platform. I can't use um, I can't use Objective C and Apple's frameworks on a different platform. There is no like DirectX renderer or you know something something of that nature. So I like to design things that are cross-platform. I like to make products that are available to a lot of people, as many people as possible. And what that means is um, kind of not opting into the sort of default abstractions that you get with many of these kits. And that means using just a little bit of the kit, but then um, ultimately taking, taking control and uh, spending most of our time in this space where we're talking about vertex buffers and texture memory and um, creating geometry that we then tell the, tell the GPU to draw. So that's just to give you a sense of what, what the similarities and differences are Every window in the kits has a view. So we can look at that. We can actually look at NS window. We can look this up. If we do the NS window class reference, I'm going to bump that up just a little bit. If we look that up, every window has a view. All right? And so what that means is, we can, we can uh, yeah, content view, right? So this is, so this, and what you'll see here is, it's an NS view, okay? Remember in, in object-oriented programming, um, one, of the, one of the sort of rules is, um, or one of the ideas is this idea of inheritance, right? So there, so I want you to keep that in mind. There's this idea at the top of the view hierarchy, or the top of the, the um, class, 
uh, call this the view class hierarchy or whatever, is this idea of an NS view. And that's like, that's like all views inherit from this, right? So all views kind of inherit from NS view. Um, but then there are different view subclasses that either you can create or that exist already within the kits that can then take over or that, that can um, override some of these uh, characteristics of NS view. And one of those, if we look that, that up, is um, MTK view. Okay. So if we look up MTK view in the Apple documentation, here's what we get. Okay. A specialized view that creates, configures, and displays metal objects. You know, again, this wording is not all that, I don't love that, but you know, that's fine. Um, basically, this is, a, this is a kind of a view that you can use to do your own drawing in metal, right? And so if you look at that, um, depending on the, um, on the actual interface or the, if you're on iOS, Mac Catalyst, which is their cross-platform thingy, or Mac OS, um, they inherit from different parent classes. Uh, so on iOS, it inherits from UI view. On Mac OS, it inherits from um, NS view. Um, that doesn't matter, but that much. My point being, NS view is kind of like, that's, that's the super class on Mac OS that MTK view inherits from. And so if we're kind of, you know, just putting the pieces together in our minds of what's actually going on here, um, we can take this, because remember, it's an, uh, an object-oriented program, you can take an, a property and, you, and um, you have getters and setters. Again, just have to, you have to know this, you don't have to agree with it. And what you can do is you can set the property of an object um, to be one of the views. So, or, or to, you, you can say, okay, this, we can set the content view of the window to be an instance of MTK view, right? So that's actually something that, that is allowed. So we could, so just kind of doing some, uh, we'll say MTK view. So this is, this is just to say that there's kind of a, an inheritance relationship. Here. So the MTK view is a subclass of NS view, and what that means is we can use um, MTK view on. We can use an instance of MTK view um, and set that as the content view of our window. And what that means is we can then take over the drawing of the content for that window and do our own stuff in Metal, which ultimately means that we can drop to this lower level here. And start talking about like what really goes on, really, um, the you know some of the lower level programming that we want to do, uh, and, and we can be cross-platform. That's basically what this is. Is it's just a wrapper around something that is ultimately going to be very cross-platform and and uh, flexible. So we would do um, MTK view star. I think I just call it you know. Metal kit view. And what I don't know yet, alloc. So we got to do these kind of uh, alloc init something or other. It's probably going to be init with content. Well, we'll, we'll find out. Um, we got to look at the um, initializers of MTK view, right? So let's see. A lot of documentation here. Um, you know, we can kind of go into some of this stuff, but, um, and there, if you look at their um, examples, unfortunately a lot of Apple's examples are heavily um, in the object-oriented um, sort of Kool-Aid drinking. I wanted to just show you a different way of doing this that, that accomplishes the same thing, but doesn't lean so heavily into the object-oriented style. So, um, Okay, so init with frame, I think we want to use. Init with frame and device. So now what we need to do is get this MTL device, right? So that's like kind of a separate thing in Majigger. So, but we know that we can set up this, um, we know that we can set up this MTK view using the MTL device thingy. 
The question is where do we get that, but um, that's sort of a separate thing. So we can say init with frame. Um, and I think the frame that we can use is just going to be, um, right, so uh, you see this um, CG rect, remember that um, a CG rect is also an NS rect, so they're basically the same thing. So we can just pass um, the window rectangle uh, as the as this first parameter here. So we do that. <laughs> pass pass the rectangle and then um, device. <laughs> I honestly do not know where we're gonna where where we get the device. So. Um, I forgot, I know that I have it in another project. So let's look at um, some of this. Let's, let's take a look. Metal interface to a GP, the least to draw graphics, okay. So now the question is, there are, there, are, um, there are functions that we can use. So acquiring device objects, MTL, create system device, okay. So I, so, now you notice if we follow along this documentation, I'm also kind of teaching how to use the documentation. So metal is the framework that this um, is from. Uh, and then what MTL uh, metal actually has um, an a a MTL device class in it. And inside of that class is this MTL create system uh, default device uh, function. Um, now, I'm reasonably sure that this is a, um, oh wait, yeah, is this, let's look at this, I just want to see, yeah, okay, MTL device, I actually just think that this is, that's just a function on its own, right, you can, you can, um, there's, there's a way to read this documentation where you'll understand if, um, and unfortunately, object-oriented programming introduces a lot of confusing different types of ways that functions can be called, because in object-oriented programming, you can have functions that are at the class level, so, function, so like functions that exist at the level of the class definition, and you can have functions that only exist on an instance of a class, which when I used to teach Programming to kids was like really confusing because they're like, oh, which one am I using? Um, so it's not just functions. Um, so, and then there's, you know, functions that are outside of the class, just in the global scope. And I think that this is actually just in the global scope. So we're just going to, um, we're just going to copy this thing into our, into our code. So, okay. Um, and then we're just going to say, um, okay, we'll, we'll just call it mental device equals. And what I want to figure out is like, does this work? <laughs> right? Uh, if that does work, and we can just pass mental device in to this initializer. Okay. Now, once you've got the MTK view, then you can just do. Not that, not window dot window, window dot content view, I think. Content view equals no kit view, right? So if we do that, um, I think that can work. Now we'll find out pretty soon if um, if we have any problems. Does it build? Will it build? Will it build? No. Oh wait, um, duh. Okay, so the reason that's not building is we don't have metal kit. And I think what that is is just an import metal kit slash metal kit dot h. And that if we're adding another framework, that means that our build script needs to add another framework. So we're back in the framework. Um, let's see. Dash framework app kit, uh, dash framework metal kit. 
You notice that this is starting to get a little bit kind of lengthy, so we can start to pull up some of these framework calls um, into another uh, into another line or into like another variable, just so that the compile line isn't uh, you know it isn't just like one big sprawling line of text. It gets to be kind of unreadable after a certain point. But we won't do that now. Um, let's build it. See what we get. Okay, so MTL, um, there's like a linker problem, right? And so MTL creates system default device reference from this, not found. Um, now that could be a number of different things and I am not 100% sure exactly what that uh, what that is. It might be um, that we're, it could be that we're referencing this incorrectly. It could be a different name. I'm actually just gonna take a quick look at one of my other projects just to see what what I do in the in, uh, more developed version of these solutions. So, uh, build. okay. <laughs> well then, actually, um, common build. So here's all, see all these frameworks? Okay, so yeah, um, you see how I've also got metal and metal kit. So we use both. Um, and so that means we're gonna want this. Um, which also means that I'm gonna get kind of annoyed at all of this. So um, let's, let's just make a variable. Let's just call this um, Mac uh, uh, frameworks equals. So again, this is just this idea of, look, I'm getting annoyed. I, I'm gonna wait until I'm suitably annoyed uh, before uh, deciding to like pull all this stuff out because it just gets to be kind of a lot. Um, actually, wait a second. I want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just reference this here. And that's just dollar. Actually, I think we can just do this. Okay. And there's a few kind of like bash scripting things. I'll get to that in just a second. Nope, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so um, there's that. So these are our Mac frameworks. And actually what I want to do... Um, All right, so I, I'm actually just going to do this as like a big string like this. So one of the things that you can do if you have um, in your compile line, like a ton of, just a ton of this kind of like, I need to include this framework and this framework and this framework. You can you can make one big variable that that's like all of those, and then you can just put quotes around it. So we're going to do that. I like that option. Um, that's that that to me looks a little bit cleaner. See, I'm not all about being against clean code. I I like um, I like a little bit of it. It's just uh, when you get when, when you're so obsessed with cleaning things up that you fail to like solve the problem that's right in front of you, that's when I don't like it. So now we ought to, we ought to be able to um, just kind of, should be able to build this now and not have any linking errors. Okay, so no linking errors. Um, so we've got this thing building and what's, what's great apparently <laughs> is that um, we have no, you know, no issues here. What I'm kind of wondering is if we've set the content view to be the metal kit view, will that, um, will we be able to actually see that when we run the code? So that's, that's kind of a question. Okay. Looks like no, but, um, you know, there's probably more to it than that. So there's still quite a lot of um, other setup that we need to do to kind of get started and to actually start drawing into one of these things. But we can almost certainly, um, you know, maybe maybe one way that we could verify it is we could do something like um, just setting the background color of the metal kit view, just to be sure that um, 
it, you know, it, this did happen. So we'll set it to like a blue color, you know, just to be, because I, I like to kind of know that stuff happened um, instead of just like, I don't know, not knowing. I like to do just a little bit of testing. So let's do this. Set background color. Oh, never mind. I guess it does not respond to that. Huh. Never mind. How can we tell if the... Well, you know what? That's okay for now. Because there's other things that we can do that where we can know that that's happened. So, no big deal. Um, now that we have a Metal Kid view, um, and presumably the content view of the window is getting set to this Metal Kid view, actually, you know, one thing we could do is we could look at that um, inside of the debugger in Xcode if we wanted to. That would be one way of looking at it. So, uh, we could do that. Um, yeah, let's, let's actually do that. So, do we have an Xcode project for this yet? Let's see if we've gotten to that. <laughs> All right, so, code. Oh, we do not. All right, well, we're, pro we're almost certainly gonna need that pretty soon. Yeah, that's coming up. All right, uh, we're gonna go just a little bit further, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start setting up the, um, uh, we're gonna set up the Xcode project so that you can debug inside of this. And basically, if, you, if you're not able to debug, um, you're just hosed. Like you need to set up some kind of debugger, you need to have some kind of debug, debug system, or you're just gonna get totally lost. So it's really important to have that set up so uh, right now, you know, um, I actually think we just, you know what, um, the way that I'm looking at this now, uh, I think the, the better thing is to um, just put a little bit of a pause on, um, on setting up this metal kit view. And what we want to do now, I think, is we want to just go straight into... Um, making it so that we can uh, look at our code as it's running and setting up a, an Xcode project and setting up, a, uh, setting up the debugger so that we can actually start to see uh, some of the state um, inside, of this, inside of this game. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to, um, to test what we have and to confirm that this is doing what we want it to do. So let's do that. And I think at the end of that, we'll sort of like wrap this session. So, setting up an Xcode project. A lot of times when you're, um, if you read a lot of these tutorials, they, the sort of default way that they um, have you start the project is to like start with the Xcode project. Um, for making games, I don't really love that because it's kind of um, starting out in a very crufty way. And it is... It, it basically, if you let Apple take control of your life, they will take control of your life, and you may not want that. And what that means is they're going to take control of the whole build process, which means that you all of a sudden don't have control over that or direct control over that. You can't quite see as well uh, what's actually going on. And so that, that becomes a little, little bit of a problem. So what I like to do is I like to get the project building first, and then I like to get to a point where I need a debugger which is now, and then once we know that we need to get the debugger working, then we hook it up. Then we set up the project. So, that, so we're going to do that. So what we'll do is we'll um, open Xcode um, on, your, on the computer. Uh, it could be any, really any version of Xcode because the way that we're going to do this um, setup for the debugger, it's so quote-unquote legacy old that... <laughs> It's probably going to work on like even some of the oldest versions of Xcode that you could um, come up with. So we're going to create a new Xcode project. And this is something for which there is like no tutorial that I am aware of. 
I don't really know of anybody that does this aside from like myself and maybe a handful of other people probably who work at like rad game tools. But um, we go to other and then you create empty. So we, what we actually want is an empty project that we are then going to start filling in uh, what, what goes inside of it. So an empty project that we're going to go next. Um, I don't know, you know, you can call this whatever team you want to use. Um, I'm just going to call this uh, Moose Solutions because that's the name of this. You, you can really, the project name doesn't really matter that much because um, we're, this, this is, we're only using Xcode so that we can, so that we can um, use the debugger. So what you name the project is really not relevant. Um, so I would just kind of, you know, not really worry too much about that. And where I like, I like to put my Xcode project in the Mac platform uh, folder. And uh, I guess just for, for a reason that, you know, the code that's in the Mac platform is really only ever going to be relevant to, to the Mac platform. The, pro, the Xcode project is only relevant to, to what, to the code that's running on the Mac platform. So um, that's why I like to create it here instead of elsewhere. Okay. And so now we've got this project, right? We've got this, pro, this, um, this uh, kind of default project. And you notice that there's really nothing in it, right? So we, we've just got kind of an empty project. Um, now, a lot, of, a lot of you are probably used to, um, you're probably used to having this big project file and all these files in it. And um, if you add a file or remove a file, then uh, if you're working on a team, then there's like all these merge conflicts because um, somebody somebody modified the project file and then and then that like caused the project file to get rebuilt. And the problem is is because Xcode uses this project file by default to to build to figure out what source to build. So it's actually a very complicated build process. And what I have found is just working on my own and without really adding many uh, files to the project and not building through Xcode, I don't have these like big monolithic merge problems in the, in the PBX project file. I just, I don't even use the, I don't even use the project file really. I use it for a handful of files that I'm currently working on running the debugger with and that's like it. So what I'm saying is that if you actually work this way where your build system is separated from the uh, from the Xcode project, what I found is I have well, so much fewer um, merge problems or like source control problems that way. Um, granted, I'm just a one person team, but I can also I, I can also imagine situations where I'm working with other people and you know they make changes to the project or um, they make changes to other files. I, I don't I don't really see there being many issues with with merge with merging at all. Um, so. That said, um, what we do need to do if we want to just run the debugger, we need to first create a target for the application. And again, uh, go all the way over to other, so it's not like a specific thing. It's not any of these really. Um, we're just using like um, kind of the, the most bare bones default thing that we can use to get going. Pick other and aggregate. And then um, I, I just call this I just call it the same name. It doesn't really matter what you call it. I call it Moose Solutions, and we'll finish here. And so now we've got this target, right? Well, what does that do? That actually creates um, that creates an option here, a build scheme that we can then, or, or just a scheme really that we can then use to uh, run it. Now building. We don't actually have any instructions on how to build. So this, so this system doesn't know what to do to build. That's fine. Remember, we're taking over kind of manually. But what we can do is we can tell it where to find the executable. So if we go to other and we go to our build folder here under the run section, and then we go back to, um, yeah, go, all, go all, the, all the way up to build Mac OS, and then uh, this as the executable and choose that. Then what this will do is it'll launch the debugger when we run this executable. 
Now you notice the debugger doesn't really have anything to attach to because we haven't moved our source code into the project. So basically what you want to do then is just take the file that you're going to that you're interested in looking at and you want to move that into the um, you want you want to move that that thing into this uh, project. So we're just going to go and uh, you know click on that and move that over. And so uh, we're going to go to code, Mac platform. And the only, obviously the only file that we have here is this Mac OS main. Okay. Now there's a few things that are really, really important. Do not click this um, copy items if needed. Uh, really, really do not do that. Because if you do that, what ends up happening is it creates a copy of this file and then it, and then it assigns the debugger to that copy. And that copy is actually not the code that is built into the executable. And so the system gets really confused. You'll get really confused because you'll try and place all these breakpoints, but then you won't actually like know, but you'll be wondering like why the breakpoints aren't getting hit. Well, the reason they're not getting hit is because you place the breakpoints inside of a copy of the file. So, we're, so don't do that. Just don't touch any of these and just click finish, all right? And then you should see your file here, right? And now notice, um, there's a few different like um, commands and whatnot, but I can start. I can just click here and I can place a breakpoint uh, at the start of this application, and then if I press this play button, it'll launch the application, and I should hit my breakpoint. So it's attaching to our to our game the solutions, the game that we built previously. or it's taking a while to do that. Okay, so that problem is happening again. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is kind of, I've, I've run into this problem before. So um, I think if you, hmm, man, this is just not ideal. All right, let's try that again. I think we need to like change where this is. I think after you add the source code, you want to re-add, you want to, you want to, um, switch this out. I think this version of Xcode actually has a bug in it. Let's try that again. Oh, that's annoying. Seriously. Unable to look. Okay. Well, this is odd. Um, sometimes... Okay, so we do... You notice that we see this console stuff here, so that's better. You know, I think this version of Xcode has actually had some pretty serious bugs in it. Um, I've had problems attaching the debugger. So let's just quit this out and then open it again and then see what see if we can't get some better better results here. See what this does. See see if we can hit our breakpoints. I've had problems with this lately. It's not ideal. Okay. There we go, we got it. So I don't know what to tell you other than Xcode is broken and um, doesn't really seem to be fixed in this version. I maybe need to update it, but I'm sure that'll bring me other problems. Um, so what I'm saying is if you run into this problem where you follow the steps exactly as I followed it, but for whatever reason, Xcode is not attaching to your breakpoints, um, like, you know, this is just like the IT crowd, like, did you try turning it off and on again? Sometimes just like, uh, quitting Xcode and uh, running it, opening it again will <laughs> get your result. That obviously sucks. That's like totally not what I want to have as a person that, you know, does this for a living. I, I want a reliable system that if I tell it to set a, you know, breakpoint uh, will always do that for me, but apparently Xcode is broken. So in any case, um, we have now hit our, we've now hit our um, starting point of the application. You can put these breakpoints in, and down here is, if you're, if you're on Windows or have used Windows before, this is kind of like your watch window. So we can actually inspect all the different variables um, for the application here. Uh, see if I can actually, yeah, I can actually increase the size of this. I'm kind of wondering if I can, nope, okay. So I can, I can actually increase the size here of that, of that, uh, text just so you can see a little more clearly. Um, now I can step through this using this like step over, right? 
And then I can start to inspect some of these um, individual variables here, like window rectangle. Remember, we, we specified a window that's at 0, 0, and it's 1,024 by 1,024. Well, I can actually look at that window rectangle, and then I can see, um, okay, there's the origin and there's the size, so I can actually look at these different variables, right? And then um, notice how NS window here, inside of our watch window, it's nil. Basically, um, nil is fancy Objective-C speak for this is a pointer that doesn't point to anything or it's like unallocated memory. It's kind of like null. Um, if I just skip over that, then all of a sudden the window has been initialized and it's got, you know, when I say object-oriented programming is crafty, like look at all this crap. Um, so see all these underscores in, in here, like underscore first responder, underscore level, underscore background color, underscore, like all this stuff. That's actually um, state in memory that represents this window. So there is some structure or some piece of memory that's been allocated somewhere. It's hidden from you because the way object-oriented programming works, it hides the data. Um, but this is actually the internal state of this window that um, the uh, app kit is using to figure out you know, all the different things it needs to do uh, with the window. Remember how I said that somewhere this style mask is stored? Well, it, there it is, right? So there actually is this structure that's, that's um, hidden in the memory that's got all your, all your data. And a lot of times what you can do is you can just, um, you can just inspect these variables and you can see, um, you can see kind of like what their values are. So um, and we can kind of go through here. We can look at, um, you know, now background color um, actually has a value, right? And it's this NS color, and we can like look at that. We might be able to print that out. Um, yeah, sometimes sometimes it won't actually tell you what the underlying data are um, when you look at look at it in the debugger, which is kind of unfortunate. So you know, again, I don't love this because it's not transparent. I, I like um, having the data up front, something I can look at. So once you pass stuff into this object oriented layer, it's like down there in the trenches, which is why most of what we're going to do is not going to be in that layer. So you can see how um, we can look at content view here and we can actually inspect it. Um, remember how I said content view is just going to be like an NS view by default because that's like the root sort of a view in the view hierarchy or, the, or it's the base class type and other stuff inherits the properties of NS view. So right now this is just an NS view and we're going to as we step through to the debugger and set up our metal device and our metal kit view, and then we set the content view of the window to, the, to this um, metal kit view, this line right here. Now let's go take another look at um, the content view. Okay, great. So what you can see here, um, I really wish that I could, I w I'd love to figure out how I can blow up this window, like just make the, make the, um, make the text a lot better, but well, if you look really closely, content view is now of type MTK view. So what I'm, what I'm saying to you is we created this metal kit view, and then what we did was we assigned it to the content view property of the window. And we then ran this in the debugger to see, uh, to confirm that, uh, that, it, that it in fact worked that now we have this metal kit view it is the content view of the window. And now assuming that we just, um, we start doing all the drawing into this metal kit view, um, we now can sort of like take the reins away for the most part from this object oriented system and we can kind of do our own procedural game logic uh, inside of this metal kit view. And so that's, that's basically what, what, uh, we're, what I'm setting you up to do. So, um, and now, hey, you know, now uh, for the most part, uh, if we don't have to restart Xcode a, a few times, we can actually, you know, debug the project. So that's, that's, another, um, that's another win. And so if you continue to run this, it's just going to keep running, right? Um, and then you can kind of quit out. And once it quits out, then uh, it's quit out. So we've set up, um, we've set up the project so that it can be debugged in Xcode. We have also sort of 
talked a little bit about the view hierarchy and kind of how that works in object-oriented programming land, or at least in Objective-C. And let's see how much time we've got. Uh, yeah, we're kind of coming up on an hour. So this is this is kind of a good, I feel like we've kind of hit a good stopping point. Um, we'll kind of just, just quickly recap. So if you remember, um, the way that uh, the way that AppKit works and the way that UIKit works, it's an object-oriented framework where uh, where you have this idea of uh, view hierarchies and of the class hierarchy. A window manages a view. That's just how it's set up. So the window for our game manages a view. And there are a lot of different ty types of view views. Um, by default, the app kit will kind of read through this um, hierarchy of views. And it will go from a root view to the child view to all of its children. And it will draw out the contents. That's typically how, how it works, right? But what we're actually doing is we're flattening this so that the, ob the object-oriented system, uh, AppKit, is only going to look at this, it is only going to go window, metal kit view, and whatever's in the metal kit view, that, that's um, like raw GPU commands that are getting executed much, much faster. And that is kind of how we um, take control and sort of bypass this mostly object-oriented system. It's also how we make our game cross-platform. Uh, because we can write the logic that generates this lower level stuff, i.e. the vertex buffers and texture memory and all the, the, we call it like drawing calls. We can do all of that at a lower level. And that can actually be in a, in a platform independent language, uh, like C++. So once we've got that, that done, we can then use that on another platform, which is actually what, I'm, what I have done uh, with other games of mine, so I've done that with um, Moose Solutions actually, uh, and I'm working on porting an another game called Cove Kid to Windows using a very similar approach. So what you can kind of see is that uh, we're getting set up to create a, a wrapper, an object-oriented wrapper around what is ultimately going to be a lower level um, drawing uh, kind of uh, system. So that's that. Um, I don't think there's much else to go over. If you like this, uh, definitely subscribe. And we're going to continue along down this road. And uh, I've got a Patreon. Go visit that. I'll, I'll post the source code under the branch day five uh, for today. And yeah, uh, I will see you soon.